Ah yes, Batman. This year marks Batman's 85th anniversary, quite an age milestone. It began with a six page story called The Chemical Case Syndicate in 1939's Detective Comics number 27. Those six pages have led to multiple blockbuster films, TV shows, video games, billion dollar merchandise and massive brand recognition all over the globe. I first saw details of a Batman Unmasked exhibition on Facebook. My ticket was about £30 and a return train to Manchester also about £20. So for around £50 I thought, why not? And for the price and convenience, Batman Unmasked exhibition mostly succeeds. So the exhibition takes place in Manchester and London. In Manchester it was very conveniently located just off Piccadilly station, so the location was quick and easy for me, despite my Google Maps saying otherwise. And it's hosted at the Depot, which is a warehouse type venue, and I had pre-booked the ticket in advance. As I went in, seeing the bat signal on the wall certainly set the tone and there was a persistent heroic theme, but none of the official Batman musical themes though on the sound system, which came and went throughout, inspiring an upbeat atmosphere, but a shame it wasn't one of the popular themes, probably due to rights issues. An attendant then took my picture in front of a screen which you could purchase at the end with some different backgrounds added for about £14, but unfortunately my expression was a bit gormless, so I didn't do it. I waited only a few minutes and as a group we were escorted into what looked like Bruce's study. Inside there was lots of books, a desk and some Easter eggs, such as the red phone from the 60s TV show. The phone then rang and Jim Lee, the president, publisher and chief creative officer of DC Comics, welcomed us to the exhibition via video. The attendant asked a question slash riddle about family, which led to an audience member turning a statue when asked. This then triggered the bookcase to slide in half, revealing the back cave. This was pretty awesome and it had music and stage smoke and was really theatrical. The first part of the Batcave inside had the Bat Cycle from the Batman and various technological displays. Getting to see the gadgets up close from most of the Batman films was pretty awesome, like the Bat Belts, the Bat Rangs, the various cows. There are three full suits on display, the Michael Keaton Bat Suit from The Flash, the Bale Bat Suit from the Dark Knight Trilogy and Robert Pattinson's Bat Suit. Up close, both the Keaton and Bale suits look awesome and the Bale version is really intricate and much more flexible. So if I were Batman, I'd probably choose the Bale one for practicality. And it's quite humbling seeing these costumes and props up close and in person. As a side note, I've seen variations of these exhibitions before in the USA with different Batman bills and suits, but this is the first time in England that I've seen such a Batman exhibition. It also might explain the choice of displays as most of these Batman films were shot in UK studios. So it's probably easier to get these props perhaps. So the Batcave Armory was the first main display section. There was then a passage that led to a white room with what looked like an asylum bed. Framed next to it was the playing card from the Dark Knight film, but I couldn't quite make out what the monologue was saying in places and didn't particularly sound like the Joker's voice, but it was a creepy room to be in. Next, there was a room of mirrors and vines, presumably poison ivies, uh, Riddler question mark lasers, which was pretty cool. These are obviously padding out the main attractions and I'd say you'd probably spend an hour max in the attraction as a whole, perhaps even half an hour. This passage then led to the Villains Gallery, which was quite literally a gallery because it riffed off the gallery location in the 1989 Batman. This was a great display with most of the favourite villains outfits on display like Poison Ivy, Mr Freeze, Riddler, Joaquin's Joker, but actually nothing from Jack Nicholson's Joker except the Ghetto Blaster. The prop cabinet was also super interesting, being able to see the Riddler's cane, puzzles, Two-Face's coin, Mr Freeze's gun, which actually looked kind of small close up. Bane's mask, but nothing much else from the Dark Knight trilogy. Then another corridor leading to the crown jewel of the exhibition, the Tumblr Batmobile. Again, awesome to see the actual vehicle and be able to see all the details up close. Apparently it can get up to 250 miles an hour, I thought I read somewhere. It actually was a little smaller than I expected, as it looks absolutely enormous on screen, but I guess that's the effect of lenses and framing. Still, it was awesome to see the Batmobile in person, and I think I've now seen all the Batmobiles, except for the Batfleck and Patterson one. After this, there was a short corridor to a breakout area for kids to draw and PlayStation 5's Lego DC games to play. Here, there were toilets and a short walk back to the entrance, which had a gift shop on the other side. The gift shop, I think, was a little disappointing. Some A3 posters were £8, and there was no guidebook, which was a major oversight. Having glossy stills of all the items, props, costumes and info panels would have been a great memento and I would have certainly bought that. They also had some quite pricey hoodies at £40, scale electrics and some very expensive comic book sets. So the merch actually was a bit disappointing. 
I did buy one poster as a memento, but I wish they would have done more with it. Throughout the exhibition, there were interesting information panels explaining the various timelines of Batman in the comics, as well as films over the years. What struck me more obviously for the first time is that over the 85 years, there is a version of Batman for everyone. The 60s Batman TV show, whilst now my least favorite, was one of my first kid-friendly introductions to the character. Since growing up, my tastes now lean more towards the Keaton and Bound interpretation, but I also enjoyed the animated series too. So through all those iterations, Batman's mysterious, introverted nature, his foreboding presence, his technological savvy and detective skills have remained constant, but they have managed to appeal to different audiences and different age groups. Overall, despite these minor niggles, I recommend checking out the exhibition if you're in the UK, as it's far more affordable than going to the Warner Brothers studios in the US. And with Batman now at 85 years old, he seems no sign of slowing down and will outlive us all. Long live the bats.